to you with another episode of Company of Heroes 2 Fight Night. Today, we are looking at a user-submitted game, um, and I'll get over to that in just one second. So, up here in the force, excuse me, in the north, we do have the OKW forces of Panzer 520. And spawning down here in the south is the person who sent me this particular game. This is uh, Foxtrot playing the USF forces. So, yes, guys, this is the first time I have actually had one of my... Um, users, let's, let's say, actually post up a game to me. I just want to reiterate how much, how easy it is going to be to actually do that. And with a new system coming on the way, if you need more details, check out my last video. Uh, how easy that will be to actually have happen. Uh, just let me know and I'll be happy to put a description or tell you where to go. Uh, just reach out to me. But okay, so the map right now is Angoville. We do see a very, very kind of basic start coming out of both sides. Uh, Panzer 520, you're just going to call him Panzer, just moving forward. Has himself, of course, those folks going to do here. full of the Pios. He's bringing up a Kubel Wagon, which already is giving a little bit of map control to Foxtrot. Although it will be nice to actually have his infantry spreading out on both sides. Um, but yes, at the same time, though, we do see the rear echelons moving over here to the western side, picking up part of this western munitions point, as well as if if it's an intelligent move, then picking up this, this fuel right here. But if not, might be just picking up that VP, which is just as good in certain conditions. My guess is that we're going to see a 50-50 split to the map. Um, and although Foxtrot already, I would kind of like to see you actually just train up another squad of riflemen. No, he does already. Congratulations. Great. Good job. Alrighty. But okay, so the riflemen are already engaging these, uh, little Strumpios over here. Kind of not doing a whole lot. But at the same time, we do see you to see a very, very quick SWS coming up from Panzer 520. Maybe a little bit too early. I would probably like to pick up another, um... Panzer Squad, or maybe another Kubelwagen, uh, to kind of give us a little more map presence than what I've got already. But a very, very interesting, let's say, adaptation. Because um, right now, what you do see, you do see not enough fuel to really do anything whatsoever, and not going to be a whole lot to do for another minute or so. Which is just not going to be great in the immediate term for our OKW player. Even more disconcerting right now, as the Strom Pires continue to stay out here. Okay, good, they do get retreated rather quickly. Um, but these rear echelons are coming up here at the same time to support these riflemen against this Kubelwagen. And although there's one brave guy out here, it's like Sergeant York up here in the front, nothing nothing bad does happen to him. But yes, where does that leave us already? We do see a 2-to-1 cap in favor of Foxtrot. 499-496, not a really whole lot going on just yet. But we do also see immediate engagement of these German Volksgrenadiers as well as these riflemen over here at the same time. We do also see a very, very early ambulance, which I will have to say, Foxtrot, I don't necessarily agree with that one. I would like to maybe see a little bit more, how do I put this, um, a little more map presence, or maybe even picking up um, your lieutenant. Hey, but that's just me. At the same time, I think you would have had enough fuel to do that. Yeah, we'd have more than enough fuel to do that. It would give you a very, very good dominant position early on in this game. Um, but that's okay. That is okay. We do see... A fuel point of peace going out to both sides. Uh, the rifleman capturing in the west, as the Volksgrenadiers is doing in the east. But um, they're going to see that Fo Foxtrot, I say Foxtrot, Foxtrot is going to have a little bit more of an earlier um, lead in terms of munitions because these German forces are not going to be able to take on these riflemen moving up. And I'm guessing, yep, we're going to see a very, very rapid redeployment up here as while Panzer might instead have been a good idea for him to go for this strategic point right here instead to kind of cut off another strategic point as well as to establish his own kind of slice. But all right, we do already see a, a fighting position actually coming out. A very unique idea right there. Another machine gun kind of come over here to lock down this western side. A very interesting idea. And we do see that Panzer 520 and Foxtrot have both picked up their commanders. Panzer in this particular case has picked up Fortifications Doctrine. So he's got the MG34 as well as the Pack 43s. So it's going to take a very kind of static position on this particular map. Foxtrot as well has just picked up M2 Pineapples as well as a Heavy Cavalry Company, which probably is going to mean that we're going to see a... Pan uh, Pershing coming out from the American player moving later into this particular game. Our supply line is cut. Germans are making a push. And while the Germans have finally found a place to put down that um, SWS making a battle group headquarters up here, we do see kind of a very static play out of both sides. Uh, although we have an, a minor flank coming on over here, might be enough to take out this squad. It'd be quite a brutal loss for 520 this early in the game. Will he, will he go? Yes, he does go down. So Foxtrot has the opportunity to quickly rush up here and pick up that Panzer Shrek. And he's got a bolt right away because there's an MG42 right there. It does kind of get um, a little bit of fire coming down on him instead. Yep. 
and there comes a smoke grenade out instead. So it's kind of interesting to see if it allows him to kind of charge forward. I probably would back off right now. But even as those Volks Grenadiers come in to kind of put some pressure on these riflemen, the other rifleman squad has kind of unfortunately di uh, dove, I was say dived, has unfortunately dived into this, this garrison right here, and it's not going to do a whole lot with the lack of windows on these particular sides. The then again, oh, we got to look over here to the western side real quick. So this scoop wagon is still out here, but with this fighting position right here and this machine gun, as long as those riflemen don't get too rocked and socked, which might be an issue nonetheless, we are going to see a fairly static western side of this map. Interestingly, although uh, I probably would have had these folks going to use, or maybe this machine gun shifting up to this godhouse right here after using that whole incendiary grenade, um, we don't see either one of those. Nor do we really see... Yeah, we're not seeing either one. We're seeing instead just a, a weapon rack unlock. So very, very interesting movement over here. I guess maybe to use... The BARs, which is exactly what's happening right now, which you see BARs getting picked up. I would say Foxtrot, if you want to move ahead in kind of like the, the pecking order of things, might be a better idea for you to pick up one of your officers, pick, kind of try to pick which um, direction you want to go. And now we do see actually an MG-34 come out in the field. Is that the second one? I think it's just another MG-34 coming out in the field, um, which a lot of people do believe is the worst of all of the particular... Uh, machine guns. We also do see the fact that we hear the riflemen are putting down mines to kind of pick up anybody that kind of shifts around this eastern side. Very good move out of Foxtrot. At the same time, we do see that um, a second headquarters is coming down, mechanized, a mechanized regiment headquarters. And unfortunately, right now, not a whole lot is really going to be able to be done with that just yet. We do see, however, a captain coming out, which means that we might see a movement towards a steward, maybe a pack howitzer coming out. Um, but it seems very, very late. Um, and some of the play that I've seen and some of my own play, I would have to suggest, might be a little bit more beneficial to see an early officer as opposed to a late one. We're a capture point. Even more interesting, we'll just see this cat. Will this Kubwa can go down? Yep, I guess this Kubwa is going to go down at the same time, which is kind of a, a worthless loss, to be honest. And although U.S. forces do get forced away from the strategic point right here, this fighting position continues to dominate this arc. And with no Panzer Shreks whatsoever, not really any opportunity to build Panzer Shreks other than this one Volk squad. I'm not entirely sure why he's not upgrading him already. Point um, ah, that's why, because there comes a Panzer II instead. So he's going to throw a lot of his hopes and dreams upon this Panzer II while kind of picking on the American forces. I would like to see... Oops, excuse me, there's some fire going down on this particular fighting position. Just a little bit of rinky-dink stuff. We are going to see Panzer coming out to kind of cut off this western side, as well as a third MG-34, which is kind of a very bizarre choice for me. Um, is that just to kind of lock down different portions of the map? Because right now, he's not really using a whole lot of his troops to great effect. I am also surprised about the idea of using... There we go, there's a Panzer Shrek. But of using um, just the infantry... Okay. Use, after this, give a little bit of a shout out to Panzer 520. Although the fighting position is going to go down, it might be better, honestly, in the long term, just to have your engineers bolt over here, cap this particular munitions point in the meantime, and ignore the fact that you're losing VPs. As of, as of right now, there's really no worry. Um, and this Panzer II might be a little bit more cautious about this as well. We're going to see the first rounds coming out on it, and it could be quite a hit. Especially with these double recoilless rifles coming up at the same time. Yikes. Nevertheless, that two-star uh, rifleman squad does get forced away pretty brutally at the same time. And this captain squad's going to also put a lot of pressure and get pressured away by this MG-34. So maybe what we'll see instead... Uh, yep, there comes the first one of those. Here comes the pack howards here to start forcing away all these support crews. Our fighting position now has some ordnance behind it. And here comes another fighting position over here. So a fox shot, if I can point out again, although this is a very excellent, a very, very good position... One is, honestly, if there's any kind of flanking around to one side, this position is worthless. Two is, although you definitely want to control strategic points, it might be better to have a much more active movement on the map as opposed to a passive one, which is what a fighting position really is. I will note that the addition of the trenches over here is going to give a lot of opportunity for these MG-34s. Um, at the same time, that pack howitzer coming out might be quite a good response to 
those static fighting positions. And right now, you're going to see something you've seen in a lot of kind of lower level games. Is that both sides take a very, very passive posture and kind of just camp VPs. Uh, it's, it's not wrong, necessarily. It's just more of that it could be way more right. Um... And, and Foxshot, if I can say anything, honestly, I'm going to quote Teddy Roosevelt for this. To make a wrong decision, oh, sorry, again, to make the best decision in a situation is the best thing overall. That's, that's what you want to do. To make the second best thing is to make the wrong decision. The third best thing and the worst is to make no decision at all. And right now, a lot of passive play does lend itself to a very, very slow movement. Also, kind of interesting, you're going to see these rifle kind of try to move up a little bit. I probably would have had these uh, rear echelons allowing themselves to take fire from this MG34 to just draw all the fire to one direction. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen. We are just going to see these, probably these, these MG34s just run from one trench to the other one. And if I were the German player, it might not be a great idea to put trenches that close to each other. Though it does lock off a little bit of area for um, let's say other fire. It also does give a very, very handy fighting position against you, should the worst happen. However, the captain does get forced away, going back to base with only one model. Uh, meanwhile, that Panzer Trek squad is putting a lot of fire in that Panzer too, but does get forced away at the same time. And we do see quite a big massive retreat coming out of our American forces back over here. So we'll take a quick look over the map. We do see right now the Germans do hold a 2-to-1 cap. Um... As well as kind of holding probably at 65% of the map. It could be 70% of the pick up that munitions point and be very good for them in the long run to actually do that. But instead, we do see, again, like I said, a very passive approach out of both sides. Foxshot might seem like he's going to start moving towards a more active approach. We do see a, a, the last SWS coming out from Panzer II, uh, for, excuse me, for Panzer 520, so instead of Panzer II. Panzer II is still quite damaged. It's kind of chilling up there in the north. I'm surprised he doesn't have a strength pilot immediately on it. And then again, with his kind of lovely amount of manpower float, I probably would have Panzer immediately build at least one more squad of, of Strumpios, as well as another squad of Volks Grenadiers to have some more mobile anti-everything, more to be more frank. However, this MG-34 over here at the same time is going to get forced away by these riflemen. Um, kind of unconfused to why some of the garrison choices are being taken. Nevertheless, the Germans right now are up 435 to 434, uh, four, excuse me, 438 to 434, 13 minutes into this game, and we're seeing a fair amount of mines coming out from the Strempios. Definitely a good idea. Ah, there we go. So we finally actually have that Panzer II getting um, a lot of healing done to it thanks to that those mechanized regiment mechanics. Uh, unfortunately, also for these guys, these Strempios would be better off just hard retreating. And over here in the west, we are going to see the strength powers are probably going to take a fair amount of issues. And unfortunately, I'm going to see, just assume right now that Foxtrot might lose at least one squad to all these mines that are going up. How... Wow. Very, very interesting things going on here across this map. We do see that with the Americans kind of pushing forward, uh, we might see a drain against... Panzer 520. It might even see him drop a squad. Yes, we do. There goes that MG34. And although this Panzer 2 could produce up tons of pressure on this rifleman squad. And, yep, there we go. Good idea. Back away. We also do see the opportunity for this Schwerer Panzer headquarters to kind of go down in the central position. And it's going to dominate quite a big area. And how big is that? Just, that'd be just outside. The, yeah, the riflemen are just outside that area. Um, and with the steward on the field, we're also going to see a little bit less utility for these machine guns as well as these trenches. Yikes. But it does not stop this MG-34 from getting... A, no, it's not the MG-34 either. I'm sorry. That was a Volksgrenadier squad this entire time. It will not stop these Volksgrenadiers from just putting down the herd on these riflemen. Just hopping from place to place, too. This captain's probably not going to want a good idea to just kind of chill where he is. But yep, instead he does back away and leaves the OKW forces with a, lot of, with a very, very decent position over here in the western part of this map. Now, if I could point out to Panzer 520, mate, this might be something he's doing already. It might be better to split up these machine gun squads that kind of create two fields of fire as opposed to just the one. And right now, considering the kind of very, very minimal positioning being taken by both troops, excuse me, actually, one second, let me 
Alright, there we go. We're coming back, guys. Kind of see that we have do see Rakettenfeffer coming out for Panzer 520, as well as a squad of Obersoldaten, which is going to be quite devastating should they get close to those American troops. We also see that Pack Howitzer is starting to put a little bit of hurt from a distance on their Storm Pios that have managed to pick up a BAR. What the heck happened there? Did I miss, did I miss a squad drop or just a, a, a weapon drop? Good gosh. But Storm Pios of the BAR is not what you want to see at all. It's quite brutal. And with this Panzer II just kind of picking on these riflemen, uh, we have quite a big issue going on over here for the USF player. And actually, when you look at the map, you see it's even further back. Not so good right now. And it's kind of lucky that that Panzer II is being as cautious as it is, because you definitely have the opportunity, Panzer that is, to run in and pick up both that fighting position as well as that howitzer. We do see in the western part of the map, we do see that the, one of those MG-34s has been taken out, finally. Uh, the other one is kind of just moving around this map. Where is that? It's up here to the north? It is. It's up here to the north, locking down this massive wide range field of fire. Um, and I'm not necessarily sure if picking an MG-34 is really pivotal to the USF forces right now, but hey, he does have him some, some now some very, very effective opportunities, let's say, to... Um, at least try to stymie some of the German aggression, because if nothing else, apply some suppression. Okay, but now the Pack 43 has been totally unlocked for Panzer 520, which would be quite devastating if he actually does manage to get a Pack 43 up in the middle of the field. Maybe have the Schwer Panzer defend on one area, and put the Pack 43 on the other to kind of. I'm not so sure, maybe it's a great idea. I was thinking maybe, honestly, putting one on the eastern part of the map and kind of locking down a similar area. And right now we are going to see both light tanks trying to hammer on each other and the absolute minimal armor that both have. Might be better for Foxtrot to just kind of reposition himself slightly. And oh, never mind, at the same time though, it looks like the howitzer is going to be just enough to, to help that Stuart probably take out that Panzer II. But yes, there it goes. Wow. So that Panzer II does go down even as a second if Rekettenberg comes onto the field. But it does also look like... Um, Panzer 520 is going to lock down this western side of the map, which is a great idea. Uh, maybe re redeploying his Rakettenwerfer to a slightly more advantageous position, maybe to kind of, again, flank more effectively on one side or the other, even more so to reposition this infantry support gun. Though I'm going to guess he's probably going to try to use it to put fire into the middle of everything else. That being said, combined arms worthless really at this point. That Pershing is quite a ways off. I can't help but wonder, yep, he's going to go finally go for that battalion. Command post, bring in that major and give the opportunity to bring in that Sherman, which could turn things around for quite a bit until at least he runs into that Rakettenwerfer. But with a Stuart and a Sherman, he should be able to kind of pick on um, not not with impunity, but he should be able to pick on the, most of the German OKW forces with a pretty effective amount of... Well, uh, being pretty blasé about it, to be honest. But yes, so what do we have over here? We're going to see this Rakette Warfare is going to kind of overrun. And pretty lucky that not a whole lot else happens to it. We do see instead a Major does come out. Um, and I can't help but wonder if maybe it might have been a better idea for Foxtrot to actually go for the M1919s as opposed to the BARs. That said, it's a little hard to really kind of look in hindsight right now. Uh, Foxtrot is behind in VPs, but does have the opportunity to really quickly dominate this western side of the map. And I can't help but wonder if this 57mm is here just to put fire on this trench. However, in the meantime, over here in the east, these Obosodaten are racking up a lot of fire onto this steward. Not that it's going to do a whole lot, as well as having this fighting position and this howitzer putting fire back on them. I will say there's a ton of very nice veterancy coming out from both sides. Well, actually a lot way more on Foxtrot's side than this for Panzer 520. Um, Panzer 520 has been very, very static about how, to, how he's fighting in this game, like I said before, which is kind of what you expect, really, with the Fortifications Doctrine. It's kind of funny for me to see that these rear echelons have now picked up a bazooka as well. And are attacking this infantry support gun. And I can't help but wish they would have something a little more effective, like, a, you know, maybe grenades, pineapple grenades at this point. But I do not think that Foxtrot's even gone from. No, he has. He does have the the, 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 the frag grenades. I must have, I must have said that before already. Might be a better opportunity for troops to kind of just either suppress or move the appropriate squads into there. But right now, these rifles moving closer and closer. I just didn't get themselves wrecked. Not going to be too effective for them. 
And with this Panzer IV coming into the field as well, it's going to be even harder for the American forces to handle things in the immediate term. Of course, rear echelons with a very, very effective bazooka hit do take out this infantry support gun, surprisingly enough. But this MT-34 might get forced back at the same time. But gosh, this, there is stuff happening all over the field here, guys. Forgive me if I missed some of it. This Panzer IV is going to take at least one more hit from this 57 mil. But it misses short, never mind. As rear echelons are going to get suppressed and then pinned in pretty, pretty short order. Might be better for them to fall back right now, as one does drop. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. There we go. We, finally see, we do see a fallback. Hey, a quick look at the field overall. The German does still remain ahead in terms of VPs. But um, considering how the army comps are looking right now, I might have to give a slight edge. Not a huge one, but a slight edge to the American forces. Especially if they're able to dominate these very, very... Uh, like. What's the correct term for this? These very, very aggressive German forces. I am surprised to see that the Stuart has been very aggressive in how he wants to move forward. I'm also surprised to see this kind of very, very quick off-screen smoke barrage coming down, but I guess the Kettenwerfer is probably right there. It's going to be an issue for the Stuart in the meantime. It looks like we're going to get, what is that, an M10? Is that what that is? I, forget, I can always forget the designation for it, but yes, so no, it's M36, forgive me. M10s are from the original game. Uh, but M36 with Tank Destroyer coming out to kind of put a little more pressure on that Panzer IV. Though with two 57 mils in the first place, as well as a ton of infantry-based anti-tank, I can't help but wonder if that's overloading it just a little bit too much. Uh, even more shocking to me was the kind of decision Foxtrot, that Major, is very good at supporting other troops. Might be better in the future just to have the other troops be up there and have the Major nearby to grant his bonuses. We do see a uh, munitions cache getting a lot of fire from this three-star OKW squad. And it looks like just a couple more shots are going to take that cache down and definitely put a lot more issues into Foxtrot's munitions supply. And right now, with him basically being behind in pretty much all metrics, it might be a better idea for him to kind of rush some squads over there right now. And there's another... There's another off-screen barrage coming in, but at the same time, it looks like we missed that Stuart going down. So, although this was a 57 mil right over in the area, that Panzer IV does manage to take out that brave, brave Stuart. However, another thing too, Fox Strike need to work on right now is flanking machine guns. Right now, you're blobbing up a little bit, and that's definitely going to cause you a lot of issues, especially with this Oloso Dot coming in around and taking advantage of all the suppressing material in the area. Now, also, it's a great opportunity for you to actually practice throwing some grenades. Oof. Uh, yes, yeah, finally, we do see a grenade coming out, and no dodge comes out. We do see a model drop from the Zobosa Dotten. And if... If... It would have been a little bit quicker, probably not have taken quite so many losses from the American side of things. But now that they do have that, they do see this four-star squad of Volksgrenadiers is getting kind of... um flanked pretty hardcore. It might be better for them to kind of book it out of there right now. Another grenade does come out, and although this captain does get pinned, this is MG-34 going to get picked off as well, so Panther is starting to drop troops left, right, and center. It'll be quite an issue for them moving forward. Yep, and there goes that four-star Volk squad as well, leaving Panzer 520 with not a whole lot. Like I said before, been probably way better for both sides. They've been a little more effective in using the, the manpower that they do have. Uh, Foxtrot, for example, you cannot float 1,000 manpower right now which, when you have, still have 26 pop cap. Might be better to be a little more um, on top of replacing your troops. And it seems like Panzer is actually paying attention to me. He is calling in... Wow, another 50... Another, okay, no, Rangers. Okay, cool. Good idea, actually. Good idea. I was just saying, another 57mm, but no, that was the... Uh, another 57mm is getting picked up, but those Rangers instead are coming onto the field. Um, so as soon as you can upgrade these guys, honestly, with these Thompsons, quite brutal against any uh, Axis infantry that they are going to get close to. Unfortunately, there is not a ton of necessarily of active Axis infantry to really worry about. 
And with the one MG34 still on the field, as long as that thing gets placed correctly, and potentially with another one right here, I'm not entirely sure why these Volksgrenadiers or Strempios or somebody hasn't come over and just recruit that. Um, that could be quite an issue for the American forces. Another opportunity, too, is to pick up this Panzer Shrek. Panzer Shrek's are way better than those M9 bazookas. Those things are kind of like pop guns by comparison. And taking out that Panzer Shrek would have been a very, very good opportunity for the USF forces in this particular area. But now instead we have this given right back to the German player, and it's not going to be good in the long term. Especially now he doesn't have to actually use 80 munitions to upgrade one of his own squads, which is definitely what you want to do is deny resources, deny, deny, deny. I will note, for example, that these Strem piles over here with the BAR are going to chew this 57mm to pieces. And you can see the decrew pretty quickly. You might even see it get picked up. And as you see, the American forces falling back in the west, and now it also looks like shoe mines coming out in the west. Um, I must say that things are, are very interesting. Not, not exactly the way I go with about a lot of this, but it does seem that Foxtrot has, instead of building another 57mm, it's just... Oh no, 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 he actually did build that because that's he just lost one already, so forgive me on that, no. So that third 57mm does get completed. Now the Panzer 520 right now, he should be building another armored vehicle of some sort, um, instead of actually right now just focusing on the micro of this, or the lack of micro, in this particular area. We are also going to see two of these uh, rear echelons drop to this mine, and guys, there's just chaotic fighting going on all over the place. And unfortunately, for some reason, this Jackson is just kind of chilling. Very confused, guys. We might see this BAR armed Strum Pile go out. No, it does not. Instead, we do see, this, we see the Rangers back up the other direction. Probably getting forced away with this uh, MG42 on top of this Panzer IV. And the LMG 42s are going to chew up these riflemen. They already dropped. They already chopped one of the Panzer trucks. And the 57 mm is not going to do jack. I guess the frontal armor. The Panzer Force, you can see already two deflections immediately. If I get dropped again, it's like a circle, a circle strafed. Hey, yep, we're gonna see ourselves a dead anti tank gun, I'm going to guess, right here. Yep, and there it goes. So, Foxtrot, good opportunity, good idea to actually put another supporting anti tank gun over here. Be able to get at least one more shot off on that Panzer IV. Oof, unluckily, it does become a deflection. But you need to be a little bit more active about your um, anti-tank placement. And although now we do see this LMG-42 moving up here, it might be a good idea to actually shift some quick infantry. Nope, instead we have this, this um, Jackson coming up instead to kind of just use a cannon to kill a mosquito, so to speak. And just missing right there. So anyway, guys, so right now it is 401 to 261. It looks like we're about two-thirds of the way through this game. And right now, a lot of the American forces are kind of chilling back at base. It's like, guys, please let me go out there. I don't want to go to school today. But you know what? Every now and again, class finds you. We just see the Major over here continue to be kind of buffing up a little bit. Keeping this pack Howard's a little bit of company, as well as this 57mm and this, this fighting position. So very unique posture being taken by the American player with Foxtrot. Foxtrot might be also better to actually have your troops bombarding something, no matter what it is. Just bombarding something, somewhere. You have the munitions, it doesn't cost you squat, you might as well use them. Panzer, in the meantime, continues to float an absolute butt-ton, to use the metric term. And here comes that King Tiger, good gosh. Um, and short of a really, really big issue in terms of micro, it's going to be kind of rough for the American player to deal with the amount of firepower on this map. Shrimp Pies do manage to dodge that grenade. Good idea there. Would it be on top of that micro? At the same time, these folks on the deer are going to drop one. They're going to drop another model. They're going to drop it up. No, not quite. And at the same time, too, these Rangers really should be posting up with those Thompsons, because at that point, ain't nothing going to back those guys off. But instead, what we have instead, we have those M1A ones. And that's not going to be enough. And at this point, too, Panzer 520, you have yourself a golden opportunity to take out this entire eastern side of this map. This 57mm will just tickle you. At the absolute most, it's going to tickle you. 
Ah, oh, so there we go. Foxtrot did hear me. So he's picking up the, picking himself up those uh, Thompsons, and with 11 supply cap just yet, uh, might be better for him to start actually dropping a squad or two. Not maybe sacrificing one of those machine guns and destroying it somehow. Might be a good idea there. Because he now has way more than enough to get this Pershing, and even though it's a couple minutes off, and both players are going back again into this very static play. I'm going to speed this up a little bit so we get a little more active opportunities moving in. Okay, there we go. So we do see these rear echelons can move forward and get completely and totally wrecked by this King Tiger and this Panther IV. And interestingly enough, we do see that, that fearless howitzer firing on the King Tiger. And the 57 mil is bravely firing on that Panzer IV, but it's not going to do squat against that thing either. Again, because again, that Panzer IV has got just awesome, awesome armor by comparison. And although these folks grenadiers are getting picked on right now, I'm predicting a death to this 57 millimeter, and maybe even a death to this howitzer right now, because that thing is woefully out of position. And there comes a six bundle gun. Yep, there it goes, uh, getting hammered right now. One of our fighting positions is sustaining fire. Yikes. Yikes. So this eastern side of this map, um, with a very passive defense, it's going to happen. You're going to have a very active attack take it out. But we might see a lucky... No, we won't. Honestly, maybe, maybe we'll see a lucky shot that's going to take out that, that retreating Raket and Ruffer. But it does not. Instead, we do see that Bands of Four moving in. That's going to be the death of pretty much everyone over here. So there goes the Pack Howitzer. And that Major might need to call it quits real quick, too. But that's okay, because in just about a minute's time, we have the Persian coming out. Uh, which does mean that these riflemen will might have an opportunity to fight back against this beast. And, ladies and gentlemen, it is, in fact, a beast. Even more interesting is this, this Jackson over here is trying to take shots over here. To found the whole actual doctrine of the war. We're having a much quicker tank destroyer. And bizarrely enough, we do see that a Pack 43 has come up on the western side to kind of lock that side of that lock down that side of the map. And we just see this King Tiger as well is kind of <laughs> a little bit annoyed. About what is really scratching the paint on his armor? Oh my gosh, is that Pack 40 taking fire? Is that Pack 43 firing? Yes, it is. The thing is firing at the infantry. And unfortunately for him, though, it looks like the little brouhaha is putting that Pack 43 to very, very limited capabilities right now. And an excellent opportunity is now up for Foxtrot to bring in that Pershing tank and definitely put a lot more hurting on the cruise. And I'm not sure I agree really with this this choice by Panzer 520 to also pick up this fa flak emplacement. Not really a whole lot of utility in the area. It's already got that Shred Panzer headquarters and the Pack 43 can turn at any point, really. So... Why move things the way that they are? I'm not entirely sure. But hey, neither here nor there. We do see very excellent unit preservation now for Foxtrot. A little bit less so for Panzer 520. The Panzer 520 is a very interesting build by comparison. And adding in this Pershing, uh, this King Tiger might not have met its match, but it's going to be a lot harder for that big cat to really abuse the situation. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to be able to do us a whole lot of good for this poor 57mm over here on this side of the map. Not rotating at all. It's going to drop in a model already. Uber low on health. And this Panzer IV is being very, very generous and not so moving, but then again, there it goes dropped. It does drop. And this MG34 is going to bolt as quickly as possible back to the dugout. Even more interesting right now, 385 to 245, going to the 35th minute of this game. And this might be this might be the charge to pick up this Panzer IV. Of course, saying that they're going to pick up the Panzer IV and actually doing it two very different things. As far as the Pack 43 in the area might be a little more difficult than than anticipated uh, to pick on that lighter tank. Even more bizarrely enough, for some reason this Kettenwerfer decides to show itself instead of having this King, this King Tiger just lay off and hit both garrisons. Even more bizarre is the decision that the King Tiger run the gauntlet between the two when you know that there's bazookas or panzer shreks in both sides. This, this King Tiger taking a ton of damage for not a lot of return. But wow, so those rangers do go down and drop a 
Panzer Shrek as well. As was Thompson some machine guns. So big loss for Foxtrot and with a ton of equipment out in the field. I have to reiterate Foxtrot, Ubi, pick up the equipment. It's free stuff. It's free stuff. All day, every day. Alright, but what is going on over here? The, the, the Pershing is finally seeing combat. As a number of this German infantry just has to move down the middle of this, this road. And luckily enough for them, they did not actually get a whole, like, you know, uh, what you call it, any kind of shot in the middle of that blob. And another idea, too, to be considering is maybe using, taking the Raketenwerfer, then putting on prioritized vehicles and telling it to camouflage. Oof, but even to say that the M57, the 157mm gun just pulps. Franz over there, poor guy. We are going to see zeroing artillery again at the same time too, so this could be kind of rough for pretty much everyone involved. Time to back away, time to back away. Run away! One shot comes in. Brutal. That's not going to be it either, there's going to be more fire coming in. Yikes. Yikes. Zeroing artillery is surprisingly effective. Good gosh. I kind of forget how far out it actually does go. Yeah, as you can see right now, it does say visible in the target area. So I don't know if actually it's the entire province kind of a thing or not. But you saw the kind of rate of fire coming down. Pretty brutal. And you guys thought I, I forgot about the western side of this map. But no, I did not. Just looks, it looks instead that the MG-34 is just going to suppress this particular squad of infantry. And this Jackson is going to impotently begin to fire... Oh, good gosh. Yikes. So you impotently fire at this uh, little squad of brave, brave OKW Volksgrenadiers. But what is going on back here at the same time? Are these guys actually... Okay, good. They're finally reinforcing. Good, good. The Gretton River needs to be back out on the field right now, though, because... With this Pershing in the area, even though it's a little wounded, as well as that Jackson, it's not going to be too great for our loyal neighborhood friends, the OKW. Then again, that Pack 43 might just pick on that Pershing a little more than it really wants to be picked on. Oh, good gosh, a lucky, lucky hit does take it out. That's brutal. So that. Oh, wow. It's that Pack 43 doing work. Wow. Uh, yeah, guys, that's kind of brutal right now. 82 to 66 and 368 to 214. Foxtrot is taking a lot of hits. Yowza. You see this, this kind of very combined arms group moving forward over here. The cut and refer as well as support squads kind of put fire onto things. But is this, uh, will this be an opportunity for them to actually pick up this Panzer IV? Interesting decision by the Panzer IV to pick on the 57 mil. But I suppose with the, the tank gun that would be a little more immediately effective. Wow. Did I have this backwards? I know someone sent me this. I could have sworn it was Foxtrot that sent me this particular game, but maybe I had that backwards the entire time. We do see the Thompsons coming out for the Rangers. Almost 40 minutes into this game, and guys, I actually am not entirely sure which way it's going to go, because one or two Our unlucky Germans are making anythings, food. really. And the Germans are going to maybe lose the game. Maybe the U.S. is going to lose the game. I actually don't even know right now. Let's just take a quick look at this map one more time. We see, again, this whole kind of Battle of the Bulge kind of opportunity for the Germans locking down this portion right here, even as this big mess of American troops moves back in to kind of take the area. Uh, still overloading a little bit too much in my mind on bazookas. Maybe it would have been better for them to kind of take some much more anti-infantry capability, but um, definitely an interesting variation. We do also see this Obersoldaten do drop down, Obersoldaten, excuse me, drop down this booby trap over here in this Western VP. For a nasty, nasty little surprise for whatever fearless American troops move forward. Even more bizarrely is the decision to kind of go up close and personal with pretty much everybody. We've dropped to 200 points. 
as opposed to just using the perfect spot to do that, which would be the charging ranges right now. And once again, I have to reiterate, Foxtrot, use the equipment on the field. There's no reason for you to waste any kind of material reinventing the wheel, so to speak. But okay, okay. Maybe I'm wrong, though. Maybe that'll be something. Maybe this King Tiger's going to run into this. Oh my gosh, this 57mm. Yikes, these rear echelons might go down at the same time, too. No, this, this smoke <laughs> barrage come out instead. It's safely allowing time enough to decap, but it might be better than to kind of bolt back to the safety of the command post right now, because the second that smoke dissipates, that guy's dead. A oh, very good firefoot. It's unfortunately been very bloody. Um, and though Foxtrot has been able to really kind of keep a lot more of his troops on the field, so close, and yet, oh wow, he does get—he does make it away. How about that? This 57 millimeter continues to fire almost impotently. And I have to reiterate, um, to use AT guns effectively, especially ones with the kind of pedigree of 57 millimeter, it might be better for to utilize anti-tank gun fronts, having two staggered. So if there's one gun right here, there's a second gun right here to, blind the enemy. to put fire on the tank as it charges forward to deal with one. I will note that Panzer 520 continues to overlook the opportunity of having tons and tons of infantry on this field, although it is nice to see the sportsmanship between the two groups. Panzer 520 agreeing there's a lot of good firefights going on the map, and I will admit that's the case. It's been very chaotic, I have to admit. Um, but I'm going to see probably a Panzer throw coming right back into this area, and I'm really hoping it doesn't happen. Oh my gosh, please don't say this going to happen. We also see a Panther coming at the same time, too, so Panzer 520 is going to take a very, very strong armored vehicle advantage. Although his tickets are starting to slowly dwindle down. Let's speed this up a little bit. Point is being there we go. We see his little bits of infantry kind of moving out to the western side. And we also see the Americans just kind of charging up to one side or the other as well. But it had been a better idea also to kind of put a lot more pressure on these guys up here. The Sheriff Panzer headquarters can be sieged down by a couple of um, anti-tank weapons. Um... But that did not happen, which definitely allowed Panzer 520 to just kind of hold down the fort, so to speak. I've been a little bit confused by the decision to bring out MG-34s all day, every day. But I cannot deny the fact that they've been at least fairly inexpensive. Maybe not the best choice, but they've been fairly inexpensive at least. And I do get the feeling that we're slowly heading ourselves into the last little bit of this replay, and I can't help but wonder, is will some of these armored vehicles get taken down? Because right now, with these machine guns in every direction, one does get wiped. And that could be quite a rude awakening for things like this Panther. A capture point is under attack. But not when the bazookas and the Panther strikes miss that harsh. And this poor, poor 7mm is going to go down in like a second. Yep, there we go. Wow. Okay. So, the AT play has been a little bit wonky in this particular game. Um, I'm going to kind of anticipate that Jackson's going to buy it in a couple seconds as this King Tiger shifts up ever so calmly. Starts firing for some reason on the machine gun emplacement as opposed to the Jackson. This is pretty much three shot the machine gun emplacement. We're losing a capture point. And there goes one building. The enemy has destroyed an emplacement. Oh wow. Okay, so this might this this might be the con the um climax of this particular game, guys. Interesting. Free rush start getting wrecked. Yep, this is the failure of the American AT capability. The brave Jackson continues to loft shots at that King Tiger. The only reason it's not died just yet is because that Panzer IV is being really nice about this. <laughs> Interestingly, we do see... Ooh, is there just enough time for this King Tiger to come back and just 
pound this thing into scrap. I don't even know who's... Oh, where did that shot even go? Good gosh. I don't know where that shot went, guys, but yep, two-shot Jackson, and that is going to be the game. 45 minutes into this. And, uh, wow, yes. So, interesting game on both sides. I will say there could have been a little bit better play on a couple of opportunities. Um, both guys need to recognize that, that this equipment on the field does not cost anything to pick back up. Might be a better idea to pick that stuff up immediately. And as now the poor Ambo does go down. And that's going to be it for Foxtrot in this particular game. Panzer 520, congratulations. And thank you guys both. Honestly, thank you guys so much for actually having good sportsmanship. I have definitely casted a lot of games recently or looked at a lot of games recently. I even played some myself where it's not been the most positive of interactions between the players, but it's nice to see um, a little bit more uh, gracious in defeat and kind of well done, you know, wishing, let's say, from the victor even at the same time. But that's going to be it for us today. Be sure to check out some of the other videos for Fight Night. We, this series is starting to grow pretty heavily. Um, I've definitely enjoyed doing it. If you guys have any games you want me to check out, please let me know. And I'll be happy to do that. In the meantime, this is Connell Work signing off. You all have a great day. Take it easy.